today we will be seeing another topic in a flight vehicle design subject. It's an airfoil selection problem. We'll do a numerical on selection of an airfoil. So yesterday we have uh, done with the, in the previous class we have started with the uh, wing selection and airfoil selection. And we have seen how important is to select an airfoil because that is going to affect the efficiency of the complete aircraft or the different parameters that are going to be important in selection an airfoil or for in order to get a good efficient product finally right so therefore now today in today's class we will be seeing about how an airfoil can be selected or what are the different parameters that we are going to consider in a complete selection of an airfoil for making it a a better one or in order to achieve a maximum lift coefficient or maximum lift right so for that we'll just see what is a complete uh, steps what are different steps that are going to involve in uh, uh, selecting an airfoil and later on we will see a problem and we will take accordingly the step by step the different parameters that need to be considered and then we'll calculate them and we'll see what is the best case for that particular problem right so similarly we will also be doing about to win right we will see all the different steps that we are going to uh, consider in the selection of a wing and accordingly we will take a numerical and we will try to solve uh, we will try to design a section of a wing right so we'll just start with an airfoil now we have already seen this in the last classes just i'm going to just brief it about right so determine the airfoil selection for a wing so we know that airfoil is a very important parameter right the selection of it or the design of it it is very important wing parameter then it's also the one that is going to be responsible for the generation of the, the optimum pressure on the top and also the bottom surfaces of the wing. So the function of the wing is generating the lift force. I would want to attain lift in an aircraft and I could attain it by using uh, uh, the wing or the designs of your uh, uh, airfoil, right? It depends on that. And this will be generated by a special wing uh, cross section called the airfoil right so my airfoil is very important parameter when i'm trying to design uh, an aircraft or when you're trying to design a wing uh, through which i want to attain a maximum lift or uh, in turn it is a maximum lift coefficient right now but when you're saying that uh, designing a lift or uh, sorry designing an airfoil or designing a wing section is important when I'm trying to uh, design a whole aircraft, right? So first of all, I try to select the airfoil or I try to design the airfoil, right? Now designing an airfoil is again a complex and also it is a very time consuming process. Now, since the airfoil is going to be tested in the wind tunnel, this we know that we are going to make all our testing in the wind tunnel and it is very expensive though. Right, so we have uh, uh, different categories of how uh, testings are being uh, uh, classified. Right, so if we're talking about the large aircraft production companies like a Boeing and an Airbus, right, so the aerodynamists or different people are going to be involved in the different areas. Right, so this we have to, uh, studied in the first uh, first few classes. Right, where I have aerodynamics, the specialist in it, and specialists come from a propulsion systems or. A, you know the turbines and uh, uh, not turbines sorry from the uh, aircraft systems or from the propulsion unit or from the flight mechanics units it all together they uh, come and uh, completely uh, bring out the uh, good parameters or they come up with the uh, product in such a way that the product is going to be most efficient one right so all of them the so much of manpower is included uh, so much of money has been spent in it in order to fulfill the requirements of a customer here, right? So therefore, in terms of a large aircraft, like uh, large aircraft companies like Boeing and Air, uh, Boeing and Airbus, then in that a budget to this would for a uh, aircraft would be uh, very much, right? Then for a smaller aircraft like uh, companies and experimental aircraft producers and the whole built manufacturers cannot afford to design their own airfoils, right? So instead instead what we could do is we could be dependent on the previous trends previous trends is a historical trends right take the data from already existing airfoil or already existing aircraft and try to uh, try to bring a certain uh, new thing in it uh, change the parameters and try to enhance the uh, parameters like a cl or try to decrease the stall and all right so that is a thing that i could be doing in it so with that so 
these small scale industries what they could do is they can be dependent on historical data of an airfoil because we are talking here about the airfoil section right then so we have a uh, certain uh, software packages like cfd in the market that can be used to design the airfoil right so two reliable airfoil resources we have studied this naka we have seen a uh, naka series of families right so from that we could be uh, dependent on take the or finally select which one is going to be a appropriate uh, design or appropriate selection for that particular problem right so regular flight operation would consist of a takeoff climb cruise turn maneuver descent approach and landing right we have seen this in the mission profile right if my mission profile is so and so it is going to be take off right then i'm going to climb then you will have a cruise segment then i'm going to descent and finally i'm going to land right and this have different segments right segment sections 0 to 1 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. Okay, right. And again, in between, I might have a loiter, right, or I might have a two cruise section, or depending on the type of the numerical that you're trying to solve, right. So, in a regular flight path, we can see a different uh, segments, right. Then, basically, the airfoil optimum function is in cruise, right, as an aircraft spends much of its time in the flight phase. Then, when we're talking about the cruise, in the cruise, we said that lift is going to be equal to weight and thrust is going to be equal to drag, right? So, thus the weight must produce the sufficient lift coefficient and drag has to be a minimum number, right? I want lift to be more, I want drag to be less, I want CL to be attained a maximum, right? Only then I could say that efficiency of the vehicle is a very good. Now, all these things, right, all of these things are going to come from the uh, airfoil section. So, altogether, it is going to be dependent on how I go and design an airfoil or how I select the parameters such that my airfoil is going to be a better option and uh, so that it is going to increase the lift coefficient, right? So, lift equations we know. Steady level flight, if I'm considering or if I'm in a cruise mode, then my lift is equal to W. We know that L is equal to half rho V square SCL. As we are seeing, lift is equal to W. W is equal to half rho V square SCL. We are talking about the lift coefficient here. I want to maximize the lift coefficient. So, my CL is going to be 2W by rho V square S, right? So, this is what I wanted to attain finally, right? That means if I want CL to be maximum, if I want CL to increase, then I want, uh, according to the formula, I am going to be dependent on different uh, parameters here, right? Similarly, uh, we are talking about the drag here. Uh, D is equal to T, T is equal to D or D is equal to T, right? My formula is going to be something like this, half rho uh, V square is C V, right? Then this thing I can write in terms of NT max for a jet engine. We have seen this. There, uh, there are going to be different values or different parameters for uh, jet engines or the propeller driven engines, right? So the formulas are going to vary. Uh, if it is for a jet engine, then it is going to be N of T max and the values of N, N are going to range between 0 0.6 to 0 0.9. And then if you, are, if you have a numerical in terms of a propeller driven engine, then propeller driven engine is going to be in this way. Right, D is equal to T, that is equal to N into efficiency of P, P max by V then uh, uh, airfoil right this we have seen in the last class again if we consider a construction of an aircraft and airfoil leading edge or a trailing edge then the cord cord line maximum camber mean camber line thickness then steps right i want to have a maximum cl so that i would have a good efficiency in the product that means i would have a maximum lift I would minimize the drag, right? And all these things are dependent on the selection of an airfoil, right? So how do I select an airfoil? What are the different steps that I need to consider while I am selecting an airfoil, right? So first of all, we are going to determine the average aircraft weight in the cruising flight, right? So average aircraft weight is nothing but your initial plus final weight, okay? Then. Uh, WI is the initial aircraft weight at the beginning of the cruise and WF is the final aircraft weight at the end of the cruise. Okay. Then the second step is calculate the aircraft ideal cruise lift coefficient that is CLC. Right. CLC 2W of average, whatever the average you are going to calculate here, initial to final. Right. So that 
uh, you take the average of it and uh, put it here in the cruise lift coefficient that is 2 w by rho v square s rho we know density v we know speed s is the surface area okay if these parameters are not given directly then uh, they might have at least said the mach numbers or the speed of the sounds or if surface area is not given directly then you should be having the altitudes or with that comes the density or i have aspect ratio here right i have v here right with, with respect to that aspect ratio is equal to b square by s right or with respect to density uh, with respect to altitude i should be able to calculate the density right so therefore my cruise lift coefficient is going to be 2w of average by rho v square s right now in a cruising plate this we know right so because l is equal to w so i am going to consider here uh, weight right Then the next step is we are going to calculate the wing cruise lift coefficient CLCW. So CLCW is going to be CLC by 0.95. So the CLC is nothing but whatever you are going to calculate here, right? What I am going to calculate in the second step, which is the aircraft ideal cruise lift coefficient, the value that I am going to attain here is going to be placed in the step three for a wing cruise lift coefficient. That particular answer by 0.95. The relation between your aircraft cruise lift coefficient and the wing cruise lift coefficient is a function of your configuration of the aircraft, right? Then the contribution of this fuselage, tail, and other components will determine the wing contribution to the aircraft lift coefficient. Then we have like this, right? So that is what has been written here. The CLC is coming from this particular, okay. So the next step is we are going to calculate the aircraft ideal lift coefficient or you could also call it in terms of airfoil cruising lift coefficient, right? So that has been given here, CLI. CLI is nothing but whatever you have calculated here, CLCW, right? So this CLCW value is going to be placed here, okay? Now, if the wing coil is going to be a constant one, with no sweep angle, there is no speed, there is no dihedral and, there, and the wing span is assumed to be infinite in this case, right? So theoretically, the wing lift coefficient should be the same as your wing airfoil lift coefficient. But in most of the cases, the wing is going to have a sweep angle. So you are going to also consider that particular sweep angle and a non-constant curve so that your wing lift coefficient will be slightly lesser than the airfoil lift coefficient. Then we are going to calculate the aircraft maximum lift coefficient that is CL max, right? Where uh, CL max is nothing but 2W takeoff by rho naught V square into S, right? And here we know VS is the aircraft, uh, VS represents the stall speed. Then finally, we are going to find the wing maximum lift coefficient, right? So maximum uh, lift coefficient CL max by 0.95. Right. Then pilot is going to be uh, calculating the wing aircraft gross maximum lift coefficient. Right. So CL max gross is going to be the previous one. What are we going to get here? Wing max lift coefficient. The answer is going to be placed here by 0 0.9, where the wing airfoil gross maximum lift coefficient is the airfoil max lift coefficient in which the effect is included. Effect of uh, high lift devices, that means I am also going to include the high lift devices like flaps, right, plain flap or any other flap. Then, for that I am going to again consider, uh, select or design the high lift devices here, basing on its type, basing on its geometry and the maximum deflection, right. Then I try and determine the HLD contribution to the wing max lift coefficient then finally it is going to be calculate the wing airfoil net max lift coefficient right so the my net to max final my net max lift coefficient is going to be the different of cl max cross minus delta of your high lift devices right now i'm going to utilize this particular data here to find out the cl lift coefficient then for this, this data is going to be included in order to find the high lift devices. If it is a plain flap, then we take that particular delta CL. If it is a slotted one or if it is a leading edge slat or whatever, right? According to the particular numerical given, uh, we consider that particular type of the uh, flap in a particular range. Okay. So these are the steps that we are going to follow. Right. So the different steps that we are going to 
calculate in order to select or design an air foil is first of all we calculate the average weight of it because weight estimation is the most important uh, parameter in the conceptual flight design then we go and calculate the ideal cruise lift coefficient then the wing cruise lift coefficient then the aircraft ideal lift coefficient then the air foil lift coefficient then you are going to calculate the aircraft maximum lift coefficient and finally it is going to be a wing max lift coefficient then finally you are going to make the airfoil maximum lift coefficient with respect to your gross and with respect to your high lift devices right so we'll just uh, do a simple numerical here i have taken a problem in order to design or select an airfoil select airfoil so for that uh, a particular uh, parameters or data is been been shown here the question uh, consists of like uh, type of the aircraft so the number of passengers have been given number of passengers are saying it 25 and the range is 900 900 kilometers units are mentioned here and endurance is one hour the maximum luggage that has been allowed is 15 kg the crew members we see two crew members here and the payload is 2375 kg the average weight of a particular each person passenger is going to be 80 kg here and the cruise speed is 150, cruise altitude is 7, one, uh, cruise speed is 150 meter per second, cruise altitude is going to be 7 kilometers, right? So this is the data that is being given and we, are, we need to select a airfoil according to the data that has been mentioned here. Okay, so we follow all the steps that we have just seen and finally we come up with uh, that uh, complete the maximum lift coefficient with respect to the high lift devices and from there we will try to sort what is the best uh, uh, airfoil depending on the inaka various from the chart right so what is the step one we have said step one is finding out the average weight of the aircraft right so we said that the average weight of the aircraft is going to be wf plus wi by two right so now what is this w w is my final one and w is my initial one right and from now this is going to be the continuation of the uh, previous problems that we have solved in order to find out the takeoff weight estimation right so what is it we have done in takeoff weight estimation from a given mission profile i am going to find out the w x or w n here right so if it is 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 then it is going to be multiplication of all his arguments right 1 by 2 2 by 3 3 by 2 3, 4 then 4 by 5 and all right so this is what we have done so for that now we are going to get final of it right so i'll just write it here after is going to be the multiplication of all the segments right then this is going to be my wf by w naught and i get an answer here for that correct or not right so from this particular answer what is it we have done we have also find out fuel weight right fuel fraction then we have also found out the empty weight fraction right let me just move all of these things so from the mission profile we are going to find out the WF by W naught, right, which is going to be the last segment. Then we get an answer here. Then we find the fuel fraction, fuel fraction, then the empty weight fractions, right. Then we, we make a iteration table, right. In order for me to find a calculated takeoff weight, what is it we have done? We are going to guess something, then we are going to estimate something, and then we are going to get a calculated figure here. We are estimated weights. We are going to estimate W naught, right? With that, you are going to place it in your empty weight fraction in the previous classes that we have seen. Then, with that, we are going to calculate the calculated W naught, right? So, I'm going to get, I'm going to guess it here, and I'm going to get a calculated weight here, right? So, this is what we have done in the previous classes. Then, from that. So here my WF, now coming back to this, finding out the average weight. So my average weight is the sum of mm, uh, final plus initial by 2. So my final is going to be the calculated W0 minus the WF, right? So we are going to get from these things here, calculated W0. I see a calculated W0 here, the value. Then from there, 
I am going to replace it here and find a wf from here. Okay, get a put an answer over there, right? So you have a wf that is going to come here, right? So my wf is going to be that it's calculated w naught minus wf. So this is going to come from the iteration, final iteration minus of wf. wf is going to from from this fraction of segments. Okay, so that is wf. Then wi. wi is going to be the w naught minus fuel burned. Okay, so that is how you should be able to calculate your first step, which is the average weight of it. Then the second step is calculation of the aircraft cruising lift coefficient. CLC is equal to the aircraft cruising lift coefficient is nothing but L is equal to half rho V square SCL. And we have said that Okay, I'll just write it. So second step is CL. So it is half rho V square is CL. L is equal to W. So W is equal to half rho V square is CL. From there, my CL is equal to 2 W by rho V square. Yes, right. So this W is going to be the average now. Okay. So from this, what is the data that has been given to us? We we have found out from the first step W average. So that we are going to put it here. 2 into W average value, you have got something. Then by rho v square is. Rho is your density. Density is not given to me in the question. Correct? Right? I don't see a density. But what I see, I see here altitude. Altitude is given 7 kilometers. So from the altitude, I should be able to calculate the density. Okay? According at that altitude, what is the density I should be able to calculate? So that density uh, is going to be. So let me just write it here. So my W average uh, answer is going to be uh, one one two six five point five kg. Right? When you calculate WF and WI, this is going to be your answer. Right? For the first step, that is your W average. Then um, step two. For a 7 kilometers, my density is uh, something like 0 0.589 kg per meter cube, right? So this you can check from your uh, appendices and you can note down. So that is my row. Then uh, B, B and S also I can calculate, right? S I should be calculating from aspect ratio is equal to B square by S. Aspect, if aspect ratio is given, from there you can calculate velocity is given. Uh, velocity is given 150 meters per second, right? So from there, we should be able to calculate this aircraft cruising lift coefficient. So aircraft cruising lift coefficient, if you go and calculate, then it's going to be 0 0.3553, right? So that is my calculation of the aircraft uh, cruising lift coefficient. Then the next second step is calculation of the wing cruising lift coefficient. So aircraft, uh, wing cruising lift coefficient is nothing but your CLC by 0 0.95. So CLC 0 0.3553 by 0 0.95 will give you will give you something like 0 0.37401. Okay, so that is the step three. Then what is step four? Step four is calculation of airfoil cruising lift coefficient. Airfoil cruising lift coefficient is nothing but the answer that you got from the step three, which is 0 0.37. 0 0.3740 by 0 0.9. Uh, that should give the answer of uh, 0 0.37. Okay, that is going to give me 0 0.374014, almost similar. Then we'll go to step 5. Step 5 is calculation of the aircraft maximum lift coefficient, right? So, aircraft maximum lift coefficient formula we have seen. So, to uh, Take off weight by rho v square s. So rho v square stall speed. Rho v square s and w t naught is nothing but w i. Right? So w i you have calculated in the first step. So with that we are going to get something like uh, two point zero four three nine. Okay, so that should be the answer. Then the step C calculation of wing max lift coefficient. Now, wing max lift coefficient is nothing but your aircraft maximum lift coefficient by 0 0.95. This should be 0 point, uh, 
2.1505 okay then finally it is a calculation of aerofoil max so aerofoil max is going to be the gross of the answer is going to be 2.38944 okay so this is the one then now from that the step 8 is your selection of high lift devices right when you are uh, done with all the steps by calculating all the cs then finally we are going to uh, assume or we are going to take the high lift devices also in it so from this for this particular uh, high lift devices we are going to consider a uh, plane flaps right so my wing cruise lift coefficient we have got the answer to be 0 0.3740 and for cl it is a uh, 2.38 2.38 and 0.3740 right so taking these data we we are going to use a plane flap and if i consider a plane flap then the delta cl for a plane flap we can see from the chart yeah so my delta cl for a plane flap is going to be around 0.7 to 0.9 so therefore, yeah, it is 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. So we are choosing 0 0.8 here, right? So that is your high lift device delta C here. It is 0 0.8, right? Then finally, we are determining the high lift devices to maximum C here, right? So this uh, high lift devices to maximum C here, we have we go and calculate it, right? When you are going to calculate the answer, then it is going to be something like uh, 2.38, whatever you got here from the previous one. And the delta CL you are choosing 0 0.8, so my answer is something like 1.589, right? So this should be my answer. So you can calculate all these things, right? Use the calculators and try to just simply uh, make all this calculation. Then step 10, the, uh, the last step 10, when you got all of these things, when you got a CL max, the last step is to search for an aerofoil. So that aerofoil is going to uh, be taken from the various charts you can see check all your different naka series charts and then uh, see which is the most approximately closure yeah. one so that should be your uh, approximate design or approximate airfall for the problem that has been uh, uh, chosen right so therefore my final cl max is going to be 1.5 right so for a cl max of 1.5 and a cl cruise of 0 0.37 we see a uh, various charts from it right so with that we choose a better one right so upon all of the things we check we just check which one uh, which naka series is going to be a almost closure to this particular cl max or this particular cl cruise or a plane flap around uh, uh, of delta cl of 0 0.8 right we check the close proximity and we say that yes this is the better uh, this is the suitable airfoil for the given problem of yeah, of this particular uh, data that has been given so that is going to be the uh, suitable one right so what is it we have done a problem statement given with a different parameters we need to select an airfoil right when we are selecting an airfoil we follow different steps right so in the, from the different steps follows finding out the average weight of it average weight can be found by your uh, final and initial and the final and initial are coming from the machine segment where you're trying to calculate the uh, actual uh, gross weight of the aircraft right so you find the segment fractions you multiply all your segment fractions you bring out that w naught and then you find the fuel weight fraction you find the empty weight fraction then you do iterations after doing iterations you finally come up you you assume your weight and then you bring out the exact uh, calculated weight of it right so with that we are going to find out wf and wi here which is final and initial weights then we calculate all the lift coefficient for aircraft wing for airfoil and we do all the cl maxes here for aircraft wing and airfoil we try to calculate all the cl maxes and then get a high lift device for it and we are assuming the high lift devices we are using a plane flap for so plane flaps it is 0 point in the range of 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 with the data that has been there already historical trend so we choose 0 0.8 for a plane flap and for that 0 0.8 we go and find the cl max right the cl max is going to be 1.5 so for that 1.5 and for the cl cruise and for the plane flap we find a, a suitable uh, naka series uh, that is the 
best uh, airfoil that is being uh, appropriate for the problem. Okay. So today we are going to end with this class and tomorrow we will be seeing the selection of the wing and we'll take our numerical and we'll try to see how uh, wing section can be selected and depending on what uh, parameters we are going to do it uh, by considering okay thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates